Good morning, friends. Welcome to my channel. Today's violin lesson will be on The Happy Farmer by Schumann <clears throat> in the Suzuki Book One, piece number 16. The piece is another piece in G major. It means we're going to have F sharps and C naturals. For some students, that's still a little challenging. It's marked Allegro Giocoso. Well, it just proves that these tempo indications are you know, allegro could mean fast, could mean just bright, and I think in this case that's what it means. It means bright. We're not going to play very, very fast. Um, we have an anacrusis, upbeat, a little eighth note. Remember, the first bar of the piece is always the fully full full bar of, of four beats in this case because we have common time C, four over four. The, the challenge in this piece for, for most students is just getting this hooked bow. They're just, you know, if they've had some experience. One, two, three, four, five, so this is pretty simple. The, the tempo indication, uh, excuse me, the uh, dynamic indication, forte sempre. Sempre means always. The whole piece played forte. That's how I recorded it for you. It could also have a little contrast, and I'll point that out as we go through this, where we could have a couple of little spots where we do a piano to make more interest. Um, there's not a lot of difficulties in this piece. For me, it's sort of like when, when we have a student come through here, I say, oh, this is going to be a nice easy one after all the technical challenges and thought processes for the Bach. This one's quite easy, and for most students, it is. So we're going through a... sure first finger stays down until the F sharp touches that's a little challenging the bow across strings and unusual I like to think now so the, there's a natural phrasing in there instead of instead of that feeling. Now at this point, if you'd like to have a little contrast, you could play piano. Then back to that's totally optional. It can happen twice. It just have that little extra energy of. And I play four on this last one. a little a little ritardando at the end and maybe a little tapering of the dynamic just to show that it's the end of the piece. I don't think there's anything else for that I need to discuss in this. If you have any questions please put them in the comments. But I think it's a pretty nice nice piece like a little comic if you will, a little comic relief before we get to the big piece which is the Gothic which is number 17. I've always thought that this Gothic piece is so difficult, so many difficulties, that they could have it could have been placed about number six or seven in book two of the Suzuki series. But for in Suzuki's in wisdom, he decided to put it here to challenge the student at the very end of the at the end of the book. Just like book two begins with a series of about five pieces that are fairly easy until we start getting to the more more difficult ones. And this is the way I, I find that curriculum for young students are are built. They make the difficulty level go up, go up, go up, go up. And sometimes at the end of a, a book, it gets super, super, seems super, super hard. And then they start their, their second series at a lower level and build it up again that way. So that's just the way it's done. We just roll with the punches. Okay, well, thank you so much for listening. Hope you enjoyed the video. And we will see you on the next video.
<laughs> Hopefully, the gossip, which I'll be recording very soon. Take care.